Good morning, another day here in Cox's Bazaar, Bangladesh. I would like to say another beautiful day, but unfortunately the rain has been a bit uh, relentless here. It hasn't really given me much of a chance to go out and explore. But today, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than I usually do. I'm actually going to be visiting the world's largest refugee camp today. And um, I think it's going to be a big eye-opener for me and for you guys as well. Cox's Bazaar Bangladesh actually has one of the largest or the largest refugee camp in the world. Uh, if you haven't heard of the Rohingya people, the people who have been exiled from Myanmar, from Bangladesh, they have no home. This is their home. A million people in a small, small refugee camp. And it's just something that I've never experienced. But like I said, it should be very eye-opening. I want to thank Children on the Edge, which is an NGO who has given me access and they'll be coming along with me and we'll be seeing what they're doing, what efforts they're making to help these children as well. Their goal, Children on the Edge's goal is basically to help children who are forgotten about, people who are forgotten about. And the Rohingya people are definitely a majority that has been forgotten about. People don't talk about their issues anymore. In 2017, all of these people were kind of exiled from Myanmar and brought over to this refugee camp. And so we're gonna head over there in a little bit and yeah, we'll see what we have in store. Guys, we have now arrived at the refugee camp, Kutupalong refugee camp, the largest refugee camp in the world. As you can see, we're walking through, and it, at this point, it looks more than just a refugee camp. It's become almost like a city. So I'm actually headed with Mukti, which works with the children's edge, as you can see. This is our uh, children on the edge, but Mukti is actually helping us get navigate through this camp. So I'm going to introduce you to the people as well. Alrighty. So if you don't mind introducing yourself uh, for the video and your position and what you do. I'm, I'm, yeah. Our project? Yeah, yeah, if yes, you just sir. don't mind introducing, yes, yeah. No problem. I'm Abdullah Mamun Shaheen. I'm project manager, Sildi Nandoye's project, operating by Mukti Cox's budget. We have operating here 50 learning center in Camp 7. And 5,000 students, Five male or students. female, okay. girls and boys. Uh, we are providing all kinds of teaching, learning, and textbooks, materials here. Okay. All the students. And very recently, we have covered school bed. Can you please introduce yourself as well? Hi, <laughs> this is Tanushri, working at Kutipalan Mail Camp. Hello, everyone. I am working mainly in translating curriculums for the Rohingya children at now. And Why do you guys have to translate curriculum? Because they don't have any native language of their own. If they have to learn their studies, they have to follow with Burmese language, which they don't know. They also don't speak Burmese, right? They also don't speak Burmese. But they also don't have books in Rohingya text either. Yes, because uh, yeah, there is the issue that we don't have any written form of Rohingya language. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to uh, orally translate the Burmese into Rohingya. Okay, got it. 
Thank you so much for your Thank introduction. You. So I'm with good people, as you can see, people who, I mean, but he's been here for, he's been doing, the, working with NGOs in these projects for yes. over 20 years. So he has a lot of experience working. But what they're doing mainly, and what their motive, motive is here, is to try to give the children, as many children as they can, the access to education and opportunity to learn. Because um, obviously this camp has millions of people and most a lot of children. And um, to be able to provide some education for these people is very important. So UN has actually created water distribution zones throughout uh, each within the refugee camp there's sections so this is a zone this is one of the zones so this is where people come to get drinking water every day I mean the reality of the situation is pretty crazy here guys I mean just driving through here and just kind of walking through um, you really you know it's, it really touches you to see how people are how people are living in in these situations and um, you know I've always heard about the Rohingya struggle but to actually be here and experiencing it is uh, it's really uh, it's an experience all right so this is one of the learning centers that children on the edge it's, yeah it's slippery yeah so gotta go around I can hear the children. <laughs> okay. Right. Here we are, as you can see. Learning Center. Implemented by Mukti and funded by Children on the Edge. Alrighty, so let's make our way inside here. Song. Oh, like so on. Can I just go in with my shoes? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Hello! <laughs> How are you? Good? Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Hello! <laughs> and so if you can just explain uh, what John was explaining to me, but you, you would know how to explain it better. What are you guys, Children on the Edge, what is your... Show us what your goal is with... Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Just let me. It's like a lesson As you can say, this is in Burmese. Unless I know this language, this is of no use. Okay. That's why we are translating this into their language so that they can understand this and have some some of the quality education they need to have as primarily. Okay. So you can see what we can do. Okay. My Hello everyone. My name is Meyer. I make videos uh, about different countries and different places for YouTube. Everybody knows YouTube. YouTube. YouTube sana. YouTube that the video in the hazai or bivino zaga zaire in bana. A video in bana. So today I am making a YouTube video about this camp and your class. So. And I wanted to ask, does any, does anybody want to introduce themselves first? Say their name mm -hmm. and tell me their age mm -hmm. and what do they like to do? Okay. Yeah. Speak up. <laughs> My name is Muhammad. I am 10 year old. And what? He wants to be an engineer. Very nice. Thank I you. Hope, I hope engineer. Yeah, you can do it. I hope you become an engineer. Thank you so much. And you? What's your name? My name is Nurgama. Huh? Nurgama. Nurgama. And your age? How old are you? No, sir. Nine years. Nine years old. Okay. And what do you? What is your dream? To create the sauce. 
Doctor. Okay, very good. Very nice. Thank you so much. Let's get a let's get one of the girls. Hello. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Tonamki. And uh, wh how old are you? No, 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 Police. What was that? Police. No, she wants to be police. Yeah. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> Very nice. Good job. And anybody else? Does anybody want to say introduce themselves? I go with this one. Huh? Hi, sorry. Stop. Okay, good. Hey. Hi. What's your name? My name is Mama Karas. Okay. And your age? How old are you? Eight. Eight years old. Yeah. And what would you like to be? What is your dream? I'm the teacher. Teacher. Okay. Very nice. So he's going. He wants to be a teacher like you. <laughs> Very good. Okay. All right. So now we're going to see what kind of program that the Children on the Edge is doing to help the children translate these Burmese texts. Right? Am I right? That's what. That's what this is. Okay. So we're gonna briefly just see. The picture of the teacher you seen on the screen. Yeah. He's actually first saying the what's written in this book. Yeah. Then it's translating in their language. In their language. Yes. And what do they speak? They speak Rohingya. Yes. Yeah. Okay. English lessons. We will try to learn the names of things around us with letters. So she says one it in English, English and one then in, in Rohingya. Yes. Okay, okay. And then also in Burmese, in Burmese and, Rohingya. and Rohingya. Okay, okay, okay. Do you know the name of things? Now listen and say after me. F for ant. So go ahead. A for ant. A for ant. Ball. B for ball. B for boy. B for boy. 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 Who's a boy? Raise your hand. Boy, boy, boy. Yeah, boy. You are the boys. Very good. I'm a boy. I'm a boy. And who's a girl? Raise your hand. Who's a girl? Who's a girl? Yeah, you are the girls. Okay. So the goal is to basically translate and give these kids the opportunity to learn, which is very tough here, but they're doing the best they can and programs like this help them out. The kids are going to give us some message so that people around the world can hear them because as it is, the Rohingya community does not get heard around the world. So we're going to make sure that while we're here today, these children, whoever wants to speak up, whoever wants, who has a message for the people around the world, for their community, for themselves, they can speak up and, and we'd love to hear from them. So I think this boy volunteered first, right? Okay. So I think your name is Muhammad, right? Yes. Muhammad Riaz, and what, what would you like to tell the world? <laughs> Thank you. And what, 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 what was he He said, whatever we are getting, we are well with to overcome these barriers and be one of you. Very nice. Okay. And I hope that they get the chance to do that. Yes. yes. Is there any girl that would like to say something? <laughs> <laughs> come, come, come. What's your name? My name is Romina. Romina? Romina? Romina. Romida. Romida. Very nice, very nice name. And what would you like to tell the world? Ara doctor going to say. Hmm. Ara ara ne? Engineer going to say. Shukuriya zano. Shukuriya zano. 
Very nice. And what 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 was uh what we are providing? Yeah. He is so much thankful and grateful for that. Okay. He also wants to be some something that uh, be respected in society. Very in nice. Country. Very nice. So as you can see, these children have a dream just like children around the world. Just because these children are in this situation doesn't make them any different from your child at home or wherever you may be. They're children just like everybody else and they want to they have dreams, they have hopes and I hope that they can achieve them. And as you can see what from the young ladies and young boys, they have so many things that they want to accomplish and programs like this are allowing them to at least have some kind of hope. Obviously it's not perfect. Uh, the situation is not the the most ideal situation, but you have to work with what you have and and that's what they're doing here. So So now I think the children have some some of the children have questions for me, so we're going to answer them accordingly. How can we get more contents that enhance our knowledge? Okay, here we go. So, uh, I would say to get more content like this, to get more resources like this, right? Um, I think the best way for, for these kids to get more resources like this is for people to hear their stories, yes. to see them the way I'm trying to do today. If more people are allowed to come into this camp and experience it and speak with the children and see the situation, I think more people will be willing to help and, okay. and donate materials and donate resources or whatever help that they can. And also the most important thing in this world is awareness. So when people don't have, when people don't know, how can they help? Yes. First thing is they have to know the situation, right? So once they know the situation, then they can give the help. So my goal here today is to raise awareness about this. about this. And then based on that, hopefully when people see this, they will want to help and give them more resources like this. Okay. So you can explain that to them. Sure, <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> 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 No, 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 we need to do it better. That's too much. Oh, yeah. That's it. One, two, three. Yeah, very good. Good job. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, my name is Ms. Rebecca Khatur. Uh, okay. I'm a monitoring officer from 2021. I work. What do you think is the biggest difficulty, the biggest challenge? in these programs, running these programs here in this camp. What is the biggest challenge? Uh, the biggest, because you all know, this is winter season in Bangladesh, but the, the culture is not like that. Yeah. Very hot situation and our lungs are also sweating. Yes, even so, me, I, as you can see, I'm sweating a lot. So it is very hot in the classroom. Very hard yeah. for them to learn in this situation. So yeah. if uh, we have more budget, we can uh, provide them solar fans. Fans. And like, because there is no electricity. Okay. Uh, so if uh, we have a more fun at that time, we can provide them solar fans so they can learn. Something to cool them down yeah, yeah. So, guys it's very very I, did, I didn't mention this before but it is very very hot in the classrooms and I, I, I can only imagine having to sit here for hours and trying to learn is not easy under these uh, these these extreme circumstances so I think um, Definitely some kind of. And, uh, you see, this is the lowest heat I think so today. Yeah. Because uh, sometimes before there is. It was raining. raining yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but now also it's our learner and uh, we also sweating. So yeah, yeah. And it is uh, they learn here. In learning is very difficult job. So that is uh, very hard for them to learn in this situation. To learn here, yeah. So, we try our best, you know, we provide uh, this type of uh, fences. Uh, yeah, the some is. ventilation, yeah, yeah, definitely. Need more definitely need more fans and things yeah. like that. Well, hopefully, yeah, that, that people, we can raise awareness and people are willing to, to help and donate towards these things, definitely. As we see the learning centers, here yeah. are more than 1,000 learning centers in the all 33 camps. Okay. 
In all the learning centers or all the implementers, only children on the age is doing their projector lesson classrooms. Okay, okay. So yeah, um, they're the only ones providing the projected lessons. Yes, yeah. others are just providing the traditional education, like through which books. is lecture-based and definitely, books. Definitely. We figured out it is too difficult if we don't know the language, the yeah. books are... doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Okay, so guys, as you can see, walking through oh, here no, no. is not easy as well because when it rains, a lot of these roads become very wet and muddy and so it's very slippery and the conditions are not very safe to walk here. So you have to be very careful walking through here as well. But this kind gentleman, Mr. Muhammad Noor, has invited us to his home to see how people live in this camp and what a, what a typical home here looks like. So we're going to go check that out now. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad Noor. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Alright guys, so now we're actually entering Mr. Muhammad's home. You do have to be careful, like I said. It's very, very slippery here. And um, this is how people live inside of the camp. So this is Mr. Mohammed Noor. He welcomed us into his home here. And as you can see, now who, who built all of these houses here? Was it the UN that yes, was in charge UN of? First time it set, it all was set up by UNHCR and okay. WFP for the primary project. Later, it was um, a little bit modified uh, by BRAC and other site construct, construction NGOs. Okay, okay. And most of the home, actually all of the homes looked similar to this, right? Okay. Built built Maybe, with this uh, wood yes, and bamboo. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, very nice. Uh, there is only temporary materials are used in there. Okay. No okay. permanent materials like teens, sheets. Okay. Like and um, and this is Mr. Muhammad's uh, beautiful family. He has two daughters, two daughters. and three sons. Three and this sons. is a newborn, mashallah, newborn. Um, and usually the family size here you mentioned before is, is anywhere from like usually how many children do they have seven, seven on average guys imagine i mean that usually is a very common thing in communities that where survey came out in 2021 oh. i don't know it is much maybe it can be that. more now yeah so imagine even in these dire conditions people are still having a lot of children but you can't really blame them right because no, I can't yeah blame them yeah, because they had don't have too much else to do right. here yeah right. so but this is how they live here as you can see um and uh, can you please ask Mr. Muhammad what is the biggest challenge of living in a home like this? What what is his biggest challenge here in these kind of homes? Maybe you should ask him what is their not challenge. Yeah, yeah, there you go, right? Yeah, what is what is not challenging here? <laughs> She's saying the same word I use. Yeah. Nothing is easy for Nothing her. is easy. Nothing yeah. Is easy so like uh going about their daily life, like how do they cook? How do they cook their food? Oh you can go. Check yeah, it. we can go he check it out. Okay, thank you. Alright, so this is their yeah. bedroom. Wa alaikum salam. Um and this is where they cook the food. So this is the kitchen, as you can see. Um, wow, man. I mean, it's amazing how people live here, man. This is so different than how I grew up. And my reality. So I'm so detached from this, personally. But So this is their kitchen. This is how they cook. <laughs> this is the washroom. This is the washroom. Wow. Okay. So just a little outhouse as a washroom. Okay. And every house has their own washroom or people share? Uh, sometimes it's uh, more complicated, you know. There is uh, camps when there is too much people. It's dense. Yeah. Then we have common bathroom sanitation okay they use. okay and what about like getting rid of trash and where where does all the trash go okay previously they had no option yeah but now you know site construction has managed to build a drainage system you know okay and uh, for the garbages okay they have to throw it in common area. common area and yes. then they dispose of it yes. okay and it still has a damp to recycle to them. recycle okay Thank you. Hello. <laughs> All right, guys. So that is how what a home looks like. Oh, look at that. He has a swing. Yes. <laughs> wow, fun, fun. Can I sit on this? Maybe I'm too big. 
I will break it. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, the water tank. Water. Okay. 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 And this is for their drinking water or? Drinking water. Drinking water. Okay. And it comes from like a well or? Uh, oh, the one you saw when you just uh, get off from the car. Yeah. Uh, the uh, whole, what to say, water plant. The tank. Right there. Yeah. Oh, the plant. Okay. Yeah. 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 They that. turn it on in three times. Okay. Three times a day? Three times a day. Okay. So they have three times a day oh, where they... Oh, sorry, it's two times hand. Oh, two times a day where they pump uh, water, drinking water, where I showed you when we first entered the area. That blue thing, that's where they get their drinking water. This is more for like washing things and everything, not for drinking. Oh man, it's very tough. Look at these homes. Hi, assalamu alaikum. How are you doing? Good. What's your name? My name is Sana. Sana. And you, this is your home? Yes. Very good. And you are studying? Are you studying Class also? Class 5. Class 5. Very nice. Very good. And what do you, do you like to play sports? You play football? Yes. Sir. What, which team do you like? Football. No, I like Manchester. Manchester United? I like <laughs> No problem. Like Argentina? <laughs> Argentina? Argentina, okay, very good. <laughs> okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum. And what's this here? LPG, so for petroleum, gas? Uh, no, they, this is for Rich Christian Society. They help people providing the gas cylinders for cooking for cooking ah so this is where they can i see yeah okay okay so go inside okay okay no problem thank you all right so that's where they get their gasoline for cooking very nice very interesting so as i stated before guys more than a camp this has almost become like an operational city in some way right yeah and so these bricks are more recent before it was just purely mud. Every month, it, it breaks down. It breaks again and then they have to redo it. Oh, wow. And this year, did they have a bad monsoon or no? Bad monsoon, but fortunately we didn't have any. Okay, so the roads stayed. <laughs> okay, okay, that's good. So at this point you have... Um, Hello, hello. So you have a market here. You got a, a literally operating market. This is where all the people in the camp come to buy some things, whatever they may need. Yeah, hello, high five. High five, high five. <laughs> it's good. Okay. Oh, watch out for the cars. Hello, brother. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Okay? Very good. <laughs> so over here they sell snacks. You know, different fruits, assalamu alaikum. And this is a market. It's crazy because when you think of refugee camp, you don't think of it having a market, right? You think it's just like tents and, and places where people live. But as I said, with a million people here, they need pretty much an operational city. They can't just have tents. And obviously the Bangladeshi government doesn't want these people into in their society so what they do is kind of give them their own society within this camp and these people are just making do with what they have oh, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> wow it's amazing this kid is a funny one, man. What's your name? What's your name? It's just copying me. Let me buy a water from this guy. Here. Asalaamu Alaikum, bhai. Brother, do you have water? Bottled water? D5? Huh? Water? 500 ml? 
Oh, one liter, okay. Mm. You have change for 500 or no? It's very, it's very, very hot here, guys. I mean, I feel like it's hotter here in the camp. We're right on the border of Myanmar, too, so I don't know if it has anything to do with that, but it feels very, very hot here. Too. So you gotta stay hydrated. And as we were saying, man, I don't know how these, those kids learn in that hot classroom. Like uh, he I'm wants to, he's a, he's a movie star, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's a movie star. <laughs> wow, some bananas. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Hello. Okay. So, these people who are running these businesses, they're all obviously within this community, right? How how do they like get permission? to run this business or they can just start it at any time? Permission is the joke and they are permission with the They just do it. They bought their necessaries from the local markets and okay. sell it. Sell it here. Okay. And these people are not allowed to leave this camp, right? So everything has to be done here for them. Yes. They're not allowed to exit the gates of the camp. Okay. That's why they need to have all of these things here yes. that they can purchase. Sometimes they had to, when there are no markets or shops, they had to walk along to get the things they need. Okay. Now this is much easier. You know? Yeah. Now at least they have some shops. Yeah. Let's buy I'm gonna I'm gonna get a banana so I can eat one. <laughs> support support the banana man. What's this? Okay, this is a ointment. People use this for joint pains, headaches. Oh, very nice. Okay. <laughs> and who makes this? They make it? No, no. Oh. It's from Myanmar or Thailand. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. this is written Myanmar. in Burmese. Right? Myanmar, yes. oh, okay, okay. Okay. Very nice. This is very familiar because I was in Myanmar not too long ago. So this language is very familiar to me. You guys want some bananas? Yes. <laughs> eh? Let's eat some bananas. Okay. How much? Huh? Why not? When you were in Bangladesh, you were a guest. I know, that's yes. the problem. Yes. The problem in Bangladesh is here. nobody lets you pay for anything. They always say, my man, my man, you know? <laughs> this one for money. <laughs> this one from another district. Ah, okay, okay. For money, but this is our this local is the, one. This is the local one. Yes. This is a real banana. Yes. How long has he, has he been running his business here? Okay, same way. He's the oh, he's the businessman. Okay. I don't want to do this. 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 I Oh, three, two, three or four hundred every day. Every day. Okay, so it's enough for him to live. So the level in the ration to four. So is it give us to? Yes, there. Okay. And he has a family. So two. We are shadi gorao yeh. By chhu. How many kids? Eh? Three children. Three children. Three children. Three children. Three. My wife and my wife. Two children. Two female and one. Ah, okay. Very nice. Mashallah. Oh, go. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and how much do the bananas cost? Just for reference purpose. Okay. Don't worry, I'm not gonna pay you. I know, I know, I know you. Know. I know you don't want me to. Pay. <laughs> five taka five, five taka per piece. So that's about like five five cents for all my Americans out there. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. As he said, yeah. uh, this is for three months. No shops are here for long time. Long time. You know? uh, they are not gonna profit by this. So they just, just come. Gonna, they just want the current money. Okay. You know? it's, so, so it's just for a short term. It's short time. Okay. If he finds it very lawful, then he will stay. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So most of the time, yeah, businesses don't stay here long. They come, they sell their stuff, and then they move on. Hmm. So legit banana. <laughs> very yummy. Yeah, very yummy. And it still has the seeds in it. And this one is different from yours. 
the long one. Yeah. In America, we don't have real fruit anymore, you know? <laughs> it's all like uh, genetic. They, they, yeah, they're making it now. So when you try a real banana, you know the difference. These are Burmese dresses. I saw these recently. Very nice. Salam. Salam alaikum. This one from Barmis. Mm. They are traditional. Lungi. Lungi, yeah, I know. Mm. And how much how much does he sell one lungi for? I got a shot here. Oh my god. How much? 1100 taka. That's expensive, right? Yes. That's about 1100 taka is like ten dollars. Ten dollars. Yeah, that's pretty expensive for a lungi here. But I guess his cost is maybe a lot also to bring these things to bring this here yes. is going to cost him a lot of money that's why he but, has to charge this money will, hey, can you like it yeah okay. yeah 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 but i will buy it no no because i want to support him you know for, not for you not for later later please later <laughs> If you can yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do do okay. This one is from you. Okay. Gift from you see, us. They're not letting me pay for anything. I'm getting very upset now. <laughs> this one or this one? I think, I think this no, one no, is no. good. It this is normal. It is a traditional. Normal. No, no, who normal in This one normal. <laughs> this one is like a lady's color, you know? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to get myself a lungji. Hey. You can also see greens there. So right here guys, they also have a... Assalamu alaikum. How are you? They also have... What's your name? My name is Huh? My name is Ah. What do you sell? What is this? What is this? What is this actually? I don't lime. know. Oh, it's a lime? It's a bigger lime. It's a very big lime. Oh, okay. And then this is a tamarind. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. All right, you got to be careful here. It's very slippery. Yeah. Wow. And this is beetle, beetle nut. Oh, sorry, sorry. All right, guys, people are working here. It's moving and shaking. Some beetle leaf. This is what they make the bun, the beetle bun with, which is a very commonly consumed thing. Yeah, very wet. Well. Yeah. So as you can see, guys, this is like a functioning society. Do you Are you familiar with this? No. What is that? That's olive. What? Yes. Olive. Olive. What? This is an olive. It's a huge olive. Big limes and big olives. <laughs> Hello. What's this? Uh, football? You play football? Messi? Messi! Ronaldo! Eggplant. Bottle gourd. Huh? Gourd. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Bottle okay. gourd, snake gourd. Oh, okay. It's not an uh, eggplant. <laughs> no, no, okay. it's not an eggplant. So, where do these these shop owners, where do they get the their supplies from if they can't from leave? our local market. Local market. No, but if they can't get out of here, who brings it? They get out of here, but they have to uh, return <laughs> back here okay. by four. So they have permission to go get the goods? Yes. Okay. But only the business people? Only the business people. Okay. Look at the roofs of these houses, man. And so the house that I took you guys inside of, it was actually one of the, I guess you could say, nicer houses because if you look at some of these other ones, the conditions aren't as good. It's amazing, man, how people survive in this. Oh my God. What? Making house? Gar? Gar banare? Oh. So these guys are actually making, this is how they make their houses. As you can see, they use bamboo. Bamboo, no? Bamboo? Yeah. They use bamboo shoots, as you saw when we went inside. And then they construct it like this. They strip it down, and these are the walls that the, and the roofs that they use. It's amazing, man. How resourceful these people are.
Yeah. That's what they make like this. Okay. Very nice. So most of the homes here are made with this bamboo, right? Yeah, all, yeah. all things like are this. bamboo. It's all bamboo. Okay. This is a Unichair project. And Unichair provides bamboo to them okay. to repair their homes. Okay. And uh, here is uh, many people they work uh, to provide uh, the bamboo. Bamboo, uh, okay. Is, uh, is the bamboo local from Bangladesh? Yeah. It's come from here? Yeah. Okay. Local. Let's go. Kick me the ball. Kick. Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> As you can see, some of these streets are very tight. No cars or bikes can go on these. These are strictly walking, walking roads. And look at the trash all over the place here. Look at this. There's trash everywhere. Not the most sanitary conditions. Oh man. Mean. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a lot of trash. But you know what's crazy? Like, I know as I'm walking around, mostly people are smiling oh, and saying hello. This is oh, okay. one of our oh, project officer. Okay. He takes care. He looks after the discount. This, okay, very nice. Thank you. So as I was saying, yeah. So as I'm walking around and saying hello to the kids and the people, everybody's smiling. Somehow these people still manage to find happiness in their days. But the reality is it's a tough situation, that's for sure. So we're about to enter somebody's home in a second. This is the living situation here in this area of the refugee camp. Just want to show you guys, you know, just some examples of how people live here. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. Okay, so this is how the home only just a mat just a mat used for sleeping okay so, yeah. and that's it and a small kitchen right can i come inside yeah yeah, yeah. oh okay thank you assalamu alaikum so this is the kitchen ah uh, you can't even see it but yeah this is the kitchen yeah. this is the kitchen and very congested room yeah as you can see guys this is how they cook not much here and then this is how they sleep on the mat yeah and, uh, IMO provide uh, every month uh, gas cylinder gas and uh, cylinder. this is uh, provided from How many people live in a home like this? How many? Nine people Nine people? Wow! Nine. Oh, wow! In this little house guys, nine people That's crazy And this is your, this is her family? This is her brother Hello, and, uh, She is her mother, mother? Uh, She is a personal, uh, personality with uh, disabled, ah, especially able person okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, she has one sister, she also disabled. Oh, yeah. I can say especially okay. able. Okay. Wow. And she has also one brother, he also disabled. Oh, yeah. So, so say, say, uh, I think a family, family disability. Family disability. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, she's uh, other sister. Okay. She is also disabled, his hand is not working. Okay, okay, okay. And there's no, there's no solution for this. It's just they, they, there's no medicine or something like that. No, it's a genetic. It's just a genetic. Uh, okay, okay. So the mother and two two daughters have it also. Yeah, mother, okay. two daughters, and one. Brother. And one brother has it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. But uh, our this sister is uh, strong. <laughs> yeah, she's strong. She's she's taking care of the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God it is. And, and this is their this is their father. Uh, he's, uh, the neighbor. Uh, he also okay. able. You, you see he's I the see one the one I, I, yeah. also can, can he see from he can see from childhood he's uh, blind blind uh, from one eye one eye, one eye. Yeah, one eye. Okay. and he has no money to take uh, medicine for his eyes okay. and okay. it's damaged okay. but uh, that time when it's happened uh, if he has money he can he, fix it but now it's too late yeah now it's too late and his eyes is damaged this eyes okay. damaged 
Okay. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Man, some really emotional stuff there, man. <laughs> so if you guys look out, man, this just goes on forever. This is all still the still the camp, right? I mean, this place is huge. Uh, I was told it's like almost uh, 500 acres in size, over 20 kilometers. If you were to walk through all of it, it could take you a very long time. It's huge. It's huge. Obviously, a million people, you know. But it's fascinating, but not in a good way, obviously. Um, it's very, very emotional walking through here. And you have to hold your emotions, obviously, while I'm doing this. But it's been so many moments, like when I just met that family with the disabilities, it was just so sad to see something like that, you know. But it's the reality, man. And, you know, as I walk through these places, I ask myself, like, why am I so blessed? How come I was given such a good life? This very well could have been me. And it almost makes me feel a little bit guilty walking through here. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's just tough, man. It's a tough reality to see how people are living in this world, man. All right, guys, so I'm gonna get out of here. Try to show you guys as much as I can of this Kutu, Kutu Balong, I think that's how you say it, uh, refugee camp. And it's a grim reality here, guys. Uh, somehow the people make it work, but it's a very, very emotional place to walk through. I am like, just, I couldn't stop thinking as I was driving through here, like how, how do these people even go through their days smiling and you know, finding some kind of light, but I guess you just figure it out when you're in a certain situation. But these Rohingya people have been constantly forgotten about throughout history. And since 2017, they moved here and they've been stuck here. This is their home now and they have nowhere else to go. Uh, I'm going to leave some links in the description how you can help this Children on the Edge program that welcomed me here and just other ways to help these people here in this refugee camp. Um, with that being said guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up um, Wasn't an easy one to make but I'm glad that I did it. I think this is something that really opened my eyes to this situation I always hear about Rohingya Rohingya in the news, but I never really knew the reality of it and today I really got to see it So I'm gonna wrap this video up guys with that being said remember continue to learn continue to grow And there is no growth until you leave your comfort zone. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out